how difficult has it been for you to accept the change in your life, but then flip it and be able to help people with their change? I mean, that's a huge thing that people struggle with. Yeah, change is hard. It's scary because it's the unknown. And you're like, what if it's worse? Right. Like, what? and then I think a lot, I, I wish I had a story where it was like, I was so enlightened and I was like, it can be better. I'm just going to try. It really wasn't. It was like, it can't get worse. So it must be better. That's the mm. point to which I came. And yeah. I hope that's why on Instagram, I'm really trying to promote change because I don't think people have to hit rock bottom before they experience it. Yeah. I think a lot of us are just like, it's, it's, it's okay. We settle. And he seems less scary. And we're like, it's it's fine. And it's like, is it fine? Like, mm -hmm. Is there ways that um, you can take care of yourself that would be better? And for me, change was horrifying. And, you know, something I tell my clients all the time is when you say I don't have a choice, 90% of the time, that is not true. Correct. You just don't want the consequences of that choice. Yeah. It's very, very different. So... It's like, well, I'm married and I have a kid. I don't have a choice. It's like, no, you do have a choice. You might not want to get divorced and you might, you know, not want to impact your kids that way or I don't have a choice to have this job. Well, you could make less money and take a different job. So yeah. I think it's important to realize all the choices we do have and then whatever we choose, take ownership of it. And so whenever I'm working with someone, I'm like, okay, you're presenting like you don't have a choice in this situation. Theoretically, hypothetically, what are all the choices you do have that you're not choosing right now? And I'm not saying that you should be choosing them. I just think you need to, even if you stick to the same thing yeah. in your head, when you go, this is a choice, it feels very different mm -hmm. than an obligation. Yep. And so for me, choice is like a huge thing when it comes to change. Mm -hmm. because it has to be your choice and you have to realize you're making it. You have to choose to make the change. Exactly. And it might be scary in that moment, but long-term you realize how much it helps you. You mentioned as an example, divorce or relationships. Yeah. I think that's something that a, most people do struggle with when it comes to the word change. I know for me, you know, that's been the whole feeling of being alone my whole life. And then when I hit rock bottom, it was like I had this relationship that ended up being toxic and really tough and break up. But like relationships, how often do you see that being maybe the driving force behind somebody's mental health, maybe being unhealthy? <laughs> I mean, it's something that's that I struggled with, number one, for so, so long. Oh, it's so frequent. Yeah. Or not wanting to change because you're going to um, change the dynamic you're like what if they don't like me if i'm setting boundaries what if they don't like me if i quit my job what mm -hmm. if they don't and i think we become so dependent codependent so quickly a lot of the time yeah i think we're trying to be loved and fulfill this need of belonging which is there and we we should fulfill that but maybe in a healthier way and so there's so much fear wrapped around it right. uh, people get a lot of um you know, I must be pretty and I must be worth it if someone wants me. So self-worth is tied mm -hmm. to it. So relationships often, I, I think relationships can either heal you or wound you. Yeah. <laughs> and I think some of the best healings I've done have been through relationships. And then some of the worst moments in my life have been through relationships. And so I think we take it lightly. I don't think we take it seriously enough. And this is not just romantic relationships. This yeah. is friendships. This is family of like your relationships will mold you. Mm -hmm. They will impact your mental health in such a significant way. And we need to start taking that seriously rather than like, I just went on a couple of dates. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, let's just have fun with it. And it's like, but how cool. is it impacting you? Right. Um, and so I think a lot of people just don't take it seriously enough well one every relationship that you have matters and it does affect Absolutely. you but the most important is the relationship with yourself 100 percent. and if you don't take that serious or learn how to take care of yourself that's when the, all the problems and things that we've talked about struggles with mental health come into the picture for me i didn't like i wasn't okay being alone or being just me until like a year and a half ago mm. it's such a strange feeling like now like I don't go on the date naps anymore. I haven't been on a date like since that breakup really mm -hmm. just not because I don't want to, you know, find my wife and have kids one sure. day, but it's just pouring all that energy into me and then realizing, oh, I'm okay just chasing my career or being happy on my mm. own. It's this light bulb moment. But when it comes to, you know, the change and, and wanting to have those relationships, it really comes with a self relationship first, right? 100%. And I think it'll it'll manifest. The way you treat yourself, the way you understand yourself is going to manifest in your relationships. Yeah. And what I see often, and in my book, I talk about self-loss. Yeah. It's people who don't know who they are who are attempting to be in relationships. 
this is so confusing to you and to the other person. Yeah. And so something I say is like, if you don't know who you are, who is this person dating? Like Very true. And it's not that you're doing this maliciously to them. It's like you're trying to figure it out. But I think if you don't have that relationship to yourself to anchor you, you're going to drift with the relationship or they're going to mold you more than they should and maybe not even intentionally. I think people can take advantage of you. You can end up in abusive relationships more easily. And so, yeah, I think unless, unless you know who you are, relationships are tougher. And, you know, something that I say that's maybe a hot take, unless this person is helping you become more yourself, you probably shouldn't be in a relationship with them. That doesn't mean that they're like, there's codependency, but it's like they are supporting you in a way where you're becoming more authentic, more you. Otherwise, I don't think they have a place in your life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you have to be fully healed, whatever that means, to be in a relationship. But I do think you have to be able to identify your wounds and your triggers in mm-hmm. order to make it work. So you need to be at least aware enough that you have them and what you're bringing into the dynamic. Yeah. And being really transparent, like, hey, this triggers me. Or, hey, when I do this, maybe it comes from such and such. Can you flag it for me? Can we work through it? I think a lot of people feel this pressure to be perfect before they can have a healthy relationship. And yeah. there's no such thing. It's perfect, yeah. But you got to know where your shit comes from. Yep. Otherwise, you're going to not even understand it's you who's doing it you might project it onto the other person and you know we hurt each other in relationships like yeah we're the ones that get hurt sometimes but we also probably not knowingly hurt other people and we need to again take it more seriously 